So a pretty fun day for me. I just bought this new Siemens 1200G2 and I've kind of scammed myself. Turns out the 350 page manual that I should have read has a page buried somewhere down at like page 121 that says if you buy this thing you can't use it on any version of Tia prior to version 20. So I'm using version 18 at work and I don't want to use version 20 for various reasons. And yeah, so I can't actually program the PLC that I've bought, which is a bit crazy. And I guess it's just like the way Siemens just released products is just bad, I would say. They did it with WinCC Unified. It was terrible for like two years. Every tier version that gets released every year is always buggy um, until you get to like the first or second update. Uh, the original tier, tier 11, was terrible, super buggy. They didn't give you any way to upgrade from the Step 7 project up to Tier Portal initially. WinCC Unified, you couldn't upgrade from the comfort panels, the old comfort panels, up to these, up to the new Unified ones for ages. So you just had to just start again. So loads of people just stayed on comfort for like two, three years. ET200SP, same thing. So with this uh, G2, uh, 1200, there's like, there's a long roadmap of two years. So, for example, at work, we use a serials comms module on the on the G1 1200 to talk to some electronics, and that won't be available for another eighteen months or something. And it's just like, what I don't get, I don't get it. I really don't get how Siemens go about releasing products. From looking at the manual, I don't know if they're ever gonna release the 1200 G2 to work on older tiers, which is just like. It's just dodgy business practice, isn't it? You just want me to pay 400 quid to upgrade to a V20 license, which I'm not bothered about the cost. For me, it's just that like at work, I'm making projects that are going to be used by other people. And so I want them to be on older versions because Tia doesn't support backward compatibility. So if I go up to V20 and then a customer wants to amend the project, they can't unless they're on V20 as well. And so if they're on V18 or V19, if they just bought Tia last year, I'm like, um, sorry, could you buy the new version of Tia to be able to use this project? It just, it's just bad customer service. And again, like, why don't, why don't Siemens allow for that backward compatibility? It makes no sense. I don't get that at all. They've got this long two-year process rollout for this thing, and I'm not sure if they're ever going to allow me to use the G2 on V18. So it looks like I'm just going to have to sit this on the shelf for the next two years, which is not great. And I must say... Although I am a big Siemens fan, it's it's the only PLC brand that I use. I have used the Allen Bradley Rockwell a little bit, but not really. I'm I'm all Siemens, so I'm all in on Siemens. But there are other companies that are starting to grab my attention. Companies like Beckoff, for example. I mean, I'm even considering like you know the Click PLC or the the Vargo PLC. Like I'm kind of looking at all these other competitors, and especially I'd like to do something that's probably a bit more open source and doesn't require a license for every step that I take with this bloody Siemens one. So yeah, um, my head's being turned a bit. What I will do is just as a like a first impressions thing, I'll just sh mention some of the things I like. So I, I, I use this thing. I didn't get to program it, obviously, but I wired it in and I, I had a good feel for it, you know, for an hour. And I'm pretty impressed with a lot of stuff. It's just, it sucks that I can't program it. But one of the things, for example... The, the thing that made me buy it and what I was looking forward to the most is the width. Because I'm developing small products, I need small DIN rail space. I can't have a massive cabinet, right? So having it be 30% less DIN rail space, the G2 versus the G1, that was important for me. And it is cool. It's nice to see how much less space um, it takes up. It is a bit weirder because it's much taller. So it's kind of like they just took the old 1200 and just rotated it 90 degrees. So that now it's taller in the vertical space, but thinner in the horizontal. So um, the two Ethernet ports are huge. Like that was a huge thing for me because again, I don't have space and I don't want to be putting network switches on everything. So the fact that they come with two Ethernet ports instead of the original 1200, which only has one, that was huge for me. And yeah, it sucks. That I'm not going to be able to use that feature. What was weird though, is that the Ethernet ports are on top. And I don't get that because they've got a power connector at the bottom, which I love. I love the power connector that they're using on this new G2. But the Ethernet ports are on top. So if I've got an ET200 SP next to it, which I do have, I've got to go from uh, Ethernet cable out the top of the uh, 1200. And I've got to go through my panel and then back round to get to the bottom of my ET200 SP. It's just like, 
the ET200 SP Ethernet ports are on the bottom. The old 1200 Ethernet ports are on the bottom. The 1500 Ethernet ports are on the bottom. Why is it? Why is it now top entry? Yeah, it's a bit weird. But two, two Ethernet ports is, is huge. I did mention so the power connector um, on the old 1200. When you're putting in your power, you put it in on the top left, right, and then you've got your digital inputs. On this one now, they've got three connectors, three push fit connectors that you that that. So if one push fit connector at the top does digital inputs, and then you've got two at the bottom. One does power. And that does power supply input to your PLC. And it also does the power supply for your outputs, your DQs. So that's one whole separate connector, which I love because when you was messing about with the AC 1200s, um, it was always a bit scary. Like you got, you got 230 volts and you got 20 volts right nearby. So having it just on like one whole complete separate connector is quite cool. The push fit is kind of hit, hit or miss. I like personally the, the screw terminals where you got a screw in. The wires, but uh, I can see the appeal for the push fit connectors. To be honest with you, I did struggle a bit using them today, but yeah, it's fine. I didn't get to try the, t the phone tap technology, which I'm sad about again because I can't program the damn thing. But that would have been cool to have the app. But yeah, uh, that's it for me, really. I think um, Siemens have a dodgy way of doing business, and I guess uh, there's not much more to say to that. That's just it works for them, and my head's kind. I'm kind of getting frustrated with them. I was frustrated with Insys Unified. I'm frustrated with this G2. I guess I'll still keep using it for now, but you know, Beckoff and others are starting to look more appealing. So I'll stick this thing on the shelf and probably pick it up again in two years when they've actually rolled out all the stuff uh, for it. And hopefully they either have a V18 release then for it. Look, all I need is a GSD fast. So I don't really understand why they can't do that. Or yeah, I'll probably upgrade to V20 at some point in a year or two. Cool. Thanks for watching guys. Take care. Bye-bye.